The Supreme Court will welcome its newest justice on Monday. That's when Neil Gorsuch will be sworn in as the court's 113th justice. The Senate confirmed Gorsuch on a 54 to 45 vote on Friday, but it took a bitter fight in the Senate to make his confirmation possible. Republicans used their majority to change Senate rules, allowing the minority party to block Supreme Court nominees. Those rules have changed. By invoking the so-called nuclear option, senators from both parties say the chamber will never be the same. I say to my friends on the other side of the aisle, and I say to my friends on this side of the aisle, that's not the way the Senate was designed to work. But where does the Senate go? Where should we go? Well, I hope that we'll have the good sense to restore the 60-vote margin when it comes to future Supreme Court nominees. Gorsuch replaces Antonin Scalia, who died more than a year ago. And like Scalia, he's expected to be a fifth conservative vote on the nine-member court. Now let's turn to Philip Bum, national correspondent for The Washington Post, for some perspective on a pretty intense week in Washington. Yeah. They're all intense. Every they week are. we say the, the same thing. That's true. It's like, so, so what do you think the long-term impact, Philip, is of, of invoking this nuclear option in the Senate? Well, I think that it is it is sort of a, a long-term uh, symptom of what's been going on in Washington. The Senate was designed to be the more stable body. There's a reason that not every senator can be uh, voted out in every single election. And it was supposed to be the place where consensus was built in contrast to the House, which was, which was meant to be uh, sort of more emotional. But partisanship has been so strong in Washington over the course of the past decade or so that it was sort of inevitable that the Senate would get to a point where the filibuster uh, standard, the 60-vote margin that would be needed to overcome filibusters, which have become more and more common, would fall by the wayside. Democrats actually pulled the nuclear option first uh, several years ago. Uh, and so I think particularly now with the Democratic base so riled up about President Trump, it's not terribly surprising. The president has not been shy about signaling that he has designs on Justice Anthony Kennedy's seat. Right. So what's the Democratic calculation here? Right. They've basically taken power out of their own hands. Yeah, I mean, there's, there was a big debate over this, over whether or not the Democrats should filibuster Gorsuch and therefore trigger what they anticipated would happen, which was that the, the rules would be changed uh, be, in order to replace a conservative with a conservative, as was just pointed out. They, they, but the problem is that the Democratic base is very, very active right now. We're seeing lots of uh, fundraising, for example, for uh, uh, you know uh, special elections, which we wouldn't normally see a lot of fundraising for, because people are very amped up about what happened last November and about how Trump, uh, the vision that Trump has for the country. Democrats are very, very upset. And I think that if the Democrats had simply gone along with the Gorsuch nomination right now, there would have been a lot of outcry at the grassroots level, which they weren't prepared for. So they for. think this might benefit them in 2018 somehow? Well, possibly, but I also think they just didn't want to stir that hornet's nest. There are reports, Philip, uh, a, a number of reports that there may be a shakeup in the White House, that there's essentially a power struggle inside, uh, outside the Oval Office. Right. What do we know about what's going on right now? So there's, as always, there are a lot of rumors coming out of the White House. And, and as it's usually been the case, those rumors have had some element of truth to them. Uh, and so what we've heard, the New York Times reporting, for example, uh, that right now uh, Trump is trying to isolate either Steve Bannon or Jared Kushner as sort of the pri primary voice uh, within the White House and telling them to sort of work through the struggles that they have. They represent very different aspects of Trump's uh, initiatives and Trump's policymaking. Uh, and he's sort of asked them to try and figure out how they can work better together. I think this week was a was a blow to Steve Bannon to some extent. He, he was taken off the National Security Council. He his power seems to have been diminished. Uh, Jared Kushner has been given a lot. He's had a lot placed on his plate. Uh, and so I think that there was always going to be tension between those two. Uh, and I think we're sort of, sort of seeing come to a head. We're going to be talking more about the importance of White House chiefs of staff. Reince Priebus, President right. Trump's chief of staff, is caught up in this palace intrigue. Right. Where do you think his stock is at this point? Well, I don't think his stock was ever terribly high. I mean, people may remember <laughs> that that uh, Trump was sort of trying to decide between Bannon or Priebus at the at the outset for chief of staff, and then he sort of gave them both the jobs, which I, I think was necessarily going to lead to some tension between them. Uh, I think Priebus is sort of seen as having shepherded the failed health care uh, policy plan, uh, which I think his already diminished stock, I think, really took a tumble at that point. And, you know, what we're hearing right now, again, the New York Times report was Kushner versus Bannon, Priebus not mentioned in that conversation. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And, and President Trump supposedly saying, work it out between the two of you. Exactly. Yeah. Right. right. What does it mean for health? They're, they're, they're taking another stab at a health care plan or not? Well, I mean, theoretically, but the problem there is simply that there are two factions of the, of the Republican caucus in the House, and the conservatives and the moderates are not going to agree on a position on health care over the short term. That is a painful political reality. Philip Bump, always good to see you. Thank you for summarizing yet another chaotic week in Washington. <laughs> sure, my pleasure.